The Firm, India's only show on corporate law, tax and audit matters. Welcome back. You're watching The Firm. In about a month's time, Indian accounting will undergo a sea change as companies shift to the new IFRS-based Indian Accounting Standards or INDAS. And yet, 40% of India Inc. has not even done an impact assessment. Come on, guys. You know how they say, well begun is half done? Well, among those that have done an impact assessment, almost half believe that both their net income and net worth will change by about 20%, up or down. Those are the findings of a PwC survey that spoke to 100 companies, most of which will have to adopt NDS starting April 1st, 2016. Sumit Seth of Pricewaterhouse is here to talk us through the key findings of that survey. Sumit, thanks very much for joining us. Let's start with the very first big headline that emerges from this survey, and that is that 39% of the respondents said that their companies are yet to start planning for the impact assessment of India's adoption. And if I was to break that down, 11% said that they've done nothing to date and 28% said that they're planning to do something in the near future. But how disastrous is this for these companies? Yeah, so I think, I think this is a very interesting finding actually, uh, Minka, and it's also consistent with what we are seeing uh, with, as we interact with clients. So there are some large groups, uh, also mid-sized companies, you know, who are now starting to do or planning, you know, impact assessment. I think there's also a thinking that maybe India's will get deferred. Aren't they too late in the process? I think they are. I think they are. They need to obviously work much harder hmm. because it's not just about accounting. You know, there are going to be many other changes along with it. Uh, you know, whether in terms of looking at your IT systems, you know, internal controls, income taxes. So I think. I think companies need to do quickly, you know, on this. All right, best of luck to those companies, Sumit. 55% uh, of the companies that you all surveyed said both net worth and net income will have a potential impact of up to plus or minus 20% on the adoption of NDS. Now, I think this is really the big takeaway, right? right? Because this is something that's going to show up in their financial earnings starting the first quarter of the next financial year and impact how investors perceive these companies. Can you break some of these numbers down for us? Sure, sure. I think to begin with, uh, again, this is a good, good finding. And it's not just going one way, you know, as you just mentioned. Uh, uh, you know, people generally apprehend that because of NDS, the net worth or net income will be adversely impacted. Why? Can you give us very so, quick reasons so why? So I think it is in terms of, you know, whether you talk about revenue recognition, whether you talk about uh, financial instruments, I think the accounting based on that results in more expenses uh, and liabilities to be booked. Uh, but that's the apprehension which uh, generally people have about it. But if you look at the survey findings, uh, it's also going to go other way around, which is uh, there's a pretty large population of companies who's going to show a positive net worth and positive net income. And again, if you look at it, some of these could be because of areas such as financial instruments again. Hmm. Because if you look at an Indian gap, you know, account, the investments are accounted at cost, not fair valued. So you recognize gain, you don't recognize gains, but losses. Hmm. But in the Indias, you would recognize gains also. Similarly, hedging, if you look at it, derivatives. Uh, in the Indian context, companies, again, are required to record losses, but don't have to recognize gains. Hmm. But now in the India, you know, it's both way. So I think some of these, you know, differences is going to result in, uh, you know, changes both way, uh, positive and negative. Okay, can we break that down a little further? Uh, first up, let's start with net income and those companies or groups or sectors that have said that net income could in fact decline by up to 20%. Can you talk us through which sure. those sectors are and what those reasons could be? Sure, so if you look at the report, I think the key, the big sectors where the net income could decline uh, to begin with is infrastructure, hmm. right? I think one of the key reasons why it could impact is because of the entire revenue recognition area. Okay. So in, in, the, in the new standards, you have this whole service concession accounting, which doesn't exist under Indian Gap. So that okay. could be one area. Okay. Also, these, these sector, this sector particularly, a lot of financing is done through preference share capital, okay. right? So in, under NDS, preference share capital is no longer, you know, capital but debt. And of, of course, because of that, uh, even preference dividends, interest expense. So I think okay. that's kind of, you know, two big reasons if I, if I could uh, On why ascribe. the net income could Absolutely. fall as much as 20%. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the next sector, if you look at retail and consumer. So again, if this sector, you look at it, the key aspects is revenue, you mm. know, where these, these, the, the companies in the sector 
provide discounts, loyalty schemes, rebates. So and some these of are that, all accounted for differently uh, under ADS as opposed absolutely, to IGAP, right? Absolutely. So okay. Some of that will have an implication for this sector, okay. right? There's also pharmaceuticals uh, here, which will be negatively impacted absolutely. in a big way. Similarly, yeah. similarly. And same then, reasons. Same, discounts, similar therefore, reasons. Therefore, top line will absolutely. look different. Therefore, net absolutely. income will look different. Absolutely. Okay. absolutely. And yeah. then you look at industrial manufacturing. Again, a big sector. Now, this sector, think about, you know, whether it's auto and other kind of industries. Hmm. They use a lot of leasing in terms of uh, toll manufacturing type arrangements. Okay. Right. Um, a lot of these will now be classified probably as leases. Okay. And if you do as if you do account for them as leases, so there could be kind of uh, higher recognition of expense in the earlier part of the service contract period. Okay. So I think some of that could have a you know impact on the sector. And I think pervasively some of this could be also because of consolidation. Right, some entities uh, may get you consolidated. Now have to include yeah, those absolutely. entities only that you control and nothing absolutely. else. What about financial services? That sector too seems to expect that net income could in fact be hit by up to 20%. But for believe. these companies, we won't, at least in this first quarter yes, earnings right. season of the we next fiscal, we will not see we it happen. Will see it. We will only see it happen if the convergence happens 2018 onwards, which absolutely. is where the roadmap is right yeah. now. Which is, yeah, 1819 is expected. Right, that's, yeah. that's the time. Okay. Yeah. But I think they have responded and they have come to a conclusion that look, this standard because of expected credit losses will have an impact on their... So essentially they'll be providing for more losses, more losses. on their Absolutely. loan portfolios. Absolutely. Okay, great. Sectors that in fact believe net income will improve by right. up to 20%. Right. That's interesting. Yeah, so I think uh, if you see here, it's the technology sector and the telecom sector. And if you look at it, I think some of the reasons could be, um, one could be derivatives. Hmm. Now in the Indian Gap context, uh, you know, you when you have derivatives, Losses are, losses get recognized, but not necessarily income. Hmm. Now, under in the NDS, and and if you look at technology, you know they have a lot of foreign currency derivatives, right? If you do have these gains, now under in the NDS, you have to recognize gains, right? Right. So that would be one reason, I think. But aren't uh, most technology companies today, at least the large software exporters like TCS, right. Infosys, Wipro, yes, uh, they're all expressing their accounts in IFRS in itself right. already, right? Right. And most analysts and investors follow their IFRS numbers, not their IGAP numbers. Right. So actually, optically, nothing's going to change for that set of companies. Absolutely. Right? So, so not for the large companies, right. like I just mentioned. But, but if you many see of the smaller ones. Yeah. Telecom oh. is more interesting yeah. because telecom, the, the impact has not yet been factored yeah. in, right? So telecom, actually, we try, we're trying to understand this. Uh, one reason could be, uh, if you look at telecom sector, when they when they pay commissions to you know secure more business, and the Indian gap, you know, this gets expensed. Hmm. And the Indians, they may be able to amortize this over a period of time. So that could be one reason, you know, why. why. they think that net income could, in fact, move yeah, up by almost absolutely, 20%. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. The other reason could be deferred taxes. So if you're on the Indian gap, you know, deferred taxes on losses hmm. uh, are not recognized, hmm. uh, unless there's virtual certainty. But in the Indias, you know, you could recognize deferred tax asset so long as probable. So threshold has come down. So if some of these are, you know, in that kind of stage where their losses may be moving on, uh, they could uh, recognize maybe more assets, deferred tax assets. So that could be another reason uh, for telecom. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. When you look at the list of companies that believe that net worth could be impacted negatively yeah. by up to 20% or positively by up to 20%, I think it's an almost similar list. Yes, it is. So can it is. very quickly run through if there are any standouts there? No, I think it's pretty similar. It's, you know, industrial manufacturing, financial services, pharma, which you just spoke about, and infrastructure. So where the net worth will decline absolutely. by up to 20%. Yeah, yeah. And on the other end, and where net worth could improve by up to 20%. Again, it's technology and telecom, you know, which is which is the major. I want to go on to the third headline from your survey, and that is that taxes were viewed as the number one area to have a significant impact on India's adoption. Explain right. that to me. So one I said is deferred taxes Correct. on losses. You know, that's going to be one impo important area. I think the other most important area is minimum alternative taxes, okay. MAT. Hmm. You know. And that's not just about accounting. Uh, I mean, because of NDS, uh, you know, and due to the fair value accounting, mm. a lot of accounting, you know, the gains could get recognized now in the income statement, unless, of course, companies decided to hedge accounting, right? Mm. Now, because of that, the accounting income, you know, is expected to be higher in some of these uh, situations, right? And we just discussed about that. Now, because of that, companies who probably are in the match situation Aww. could actually just, you know, see higher payout of taxes because of oh dear God. Okay. Yeah, but don't we have simultaneously the introduction of tax accounting standards submit right. and will this get mitigated by right. the introduction or the implementation of ICDS which yeah. are the tax accounting standards which 
I might point out also that the Ishwar Committee report has suggested the deferral, deferral off. Yeah. But nonetheless, do the ICDS help in mitigating this this optical illusion of higher accounting income and therefore, you know, more mat to be paid? Actually, it doesn't. And no, that's doesn't. one thing which they should clarify in my view. Because okay. at this point in time, IC, ICDS just deal with taxable income and mm. not mat. Okay, so are we ready? Uh, in short, then, last final question. Does it look as if India Inc. is ready for... Uh, Quarter one, FY seventeen, and are investors ready to see so, these new numbers? So I think I think I would also look at the other two third, right, who have done it, mm. right. I mean that's a pretty sizable population. So if they are ready and they are doing a pretty good job on it, so I think that's good. Uh, in terms of investors, I mean I think you know companies may want to at least try and communicate uh, to investors ahead of the quarter as to you know what could be the key areas of uh, impact you know on their business on the company so that they're kind of well prepared to see what the numbers look like you know when they really are published in June quarter. All right, as yet only one company has done that. Now, it's a company we talk about frequently when we talk about India, yes, and that is right. Hindustan Unilever. So the rest of you ought to wake up. So thank you very much for thank joining you. us on the thank firm, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week.